Denmark on high alert after a terror attack in Copenhagen. One person was killed and three police officers injured after a gunman opened fire at a free speech debate. Our main priority at this stage uh, is, to, is to catch the perpetrators and make sure uh, that, that we, we find them as soon as possible. Also on the programme, tackling tax evasion, Ed Miliband pledges a review after accusing the government of turning a blind eye. Four are killed and dozens injured after two major motorway crashes. And the end of the branch, how more rural high streets could be left without a bank. This is ITV News with Kylie Pentelo. Good evening. A manhunt is underway in Denmark tonight for a gunman who opened fire on a free speech debate in the capital, Copenhagen. One person was killed and three police officers are in hospital. The event was being attended by the controversial cartoonist Lars Vilks, who has faced death threats for drawing the Prophet Muhammad. Sue Savile reports. Bullets riddled the windows of an arts centre in Copenhagen where a debate on freedom of speech was taking place. One person was killed and three police officers were injured, all now said to be out of danger. One of those taking part in the event told ITV News what happened. We heard uh, bangs outside and it sounded like some crackers, but as there were more and more of them and quicker, everyone knew it's a machine gun. Um, the reason for the attack is not just to kill us, it's also to shut down any conversation, any open discussion in a free society like in Europe. A huge manhunt is on for the gunman. Photos of a suspect have been issued. In one, the man appears to be carrying a weapon. Images posted online tonight appear to show the moment the attack took place but cannot be independently verified. The Danish Prime Minister said it was an act of terrorism. Uh, we feel certain now that it is a politically motivated attack uh, and thereby it is a terrorist attack. We take this situation extremely seriously. seriously. We, have, we are in a, a high alarm all over the country. The debate was led by Swedish cartoonist Lars Vilks, who's had many death threats since he depicted the Prophet Muhammad as a dog eight years ago and now always has a police escort. It's been very difficult to make exhibitions because uh, people are scared and uh, we come into um, also other things like uh, I've been accused for racism and things like that. Forensic teams tonight search for evidence at the venue where the French ambassador had thanked Denmark for support after the fatal shootings at the magazine Charlie Hebdo last month. Now Denmark must deal with an attack on its own freedom of speech. Sue Saville, ITV News. Ed Miliband has pledged a review of how tax evasion is tackled in Britain after accusing the government of turning a blind eye. The Labour leader says the failure to stop the rich hiding money in offshore accounts is costing the country billions of pounds. Our political correspondent Lewis Vaughan-Jones has more. Ed Miliband believes he is making ground on the issue of tax avoidance, so in Swansea today he went on the front foot. He promised to reform the tax authority, HM Revenue and Customs. If Labour win, he said, there would be an immediate review. We will shine a light on parts of our tax system that have been shrouded in secrecy under this government. We'll replace a culture where there are different rules for the rich and powerful. He said tax avoidance had cost the country £34 billion and tried to carve out a clear difference between him and the Conservatives. This government has simply shrugged its shoulders over tax avoidance. It's failed to take action on tax havens. We will act. This speech came at the end of a week in Westminster dominated by the banking scandal at HSBC. Allegations of industrial scale tax avoidance. Stephen Green was head of the bank and then a government minister. This afternoon, he resigned from one of his roles at a city lobbying group to avoid being a distraction. The Conservatives have defended him and, more broadly, their own record in government. 
when you know, Labour were in power, um, you had a situation where bankers were routinely paying less tax than their cleaners, where foreigners weren't paying stamp duty, uh, and where the richest people uh, were paying the least tax. So we've, we've changed that. The change is now Ed Miliband's message and one he hopes people will want to hear. So, Lewis, Ed Miliband obviously keen to crack down on tax evasion, but why has he put this at the top of his agenda this week? Well, it's something he feels very confident talking about. You saw him smiling at the end of my report there, and I thought the, the longer that we're talking about this, the happier he will be, because he's cast himself uh, during this week on the side of people versus tax avoiding a big business. He's cast himself in similar roles before to some success. And added to that, he feels it's an area the Conservatives are vulnerable on, given their links to the city. However, that said, there are questions for him to answer. The Conservatives say that this culture that he wants to review at HMRC actually uh, came about under his watch, the last Labour government. So there are questions for him, but I still think he will try and make this a priority in the next couple of months. OK, Lewis, thank you very much. President Obama tonight urged Ukraine and Russia to respect a ceasefire that came into force in the last half an hour. It followed a day of fighting in the town of Dobolsova in eastern Ukraine. The army there have accused Russian separatists of trying to seize more land before the fighting stopped. Two of Britain's busiest motorways were brought to a standstill today by major crashes which killed four people and left dozens injured. A coach driver is being questioned after three men were killed on the hard shoulder of the M1. And on the M40, dozens of cars were caught up in a collision, as Katie Hunter reports. The wreckage of more than 30 vehicles scattered across the M40. One person was killed, a second critically injured, and dozens more hurt in the accident, which happened in thick fog. Thames Valley Police say it's the worst crash they've seen in several years. It does very much touch you personally. It's a, a horrible scene, uh, and ultimately people have, one person's lost their life, and several are seriously injured as a result. It's awful, whatever way you dress it up. The M40 northbound was closed between junctions 9 and 10 from 8 o'clock this morning traffic brought to a standstill for much of the day. The emergency services have been here for more than six hours now, but there's still debris scattered across the motorway and a dozen or so vehicles still to be moved. And police were called to another early morning accident on the M1 in Bedfordshire between junctions 12 and 13. A double-decker coach collided with a car which had pulled onto the hard shoulder. Three men, all in the car, died at the scene. A fourth was taken to hospital with serious injuries. Police investigating both accidents say it's too soon to know exactly what went wrong on two of Britain's busiest roads. Katie Hunter, ITV News. The business secretary's attempt to force banks to keep their remaining rural branches open appears to have ended in failure. Vince Cable wanted banks to agree to maintain branches that were the last in a town. But ITV News has learned they will not make that promise, as Martha Fairley reports. The government wants small towns like Brightlingsea and Essex to have at least one bank, but proposed bankers' guidelines obtained by ITV News don't promise to keep branches open, just a commitment to provide alternative services. Susan Bowes says when Barclays closed its branch last year, it was a blow to Brightlingsea and her business. Customers from smaller villages um, coming and using the banks, um, they've had to now go to the towns um, like Colchester or Clacton and they don't come here and when they used to come here they used to pop in and um, have a little browse and stuff. Over 470 bank branches closed last year, twice as many as the year before. More than 120 of them were the last bank in the town or community and another 52 are expected to close before April. Just over a year ago, there were four banks on this high street. Now only one remains. But keeping local branches open makes little commercial sense as we change the way we do our banking. Banks think long and hard about where and when they might uh, close a branch. Uh, and as part of that thinking through this agreement, they'll be very carefully considering what alternative day-to-day -day banking services will be available in the community. Those alternatives include post offices and more cash machines, but customers will need convincing. 
this is a chance to prove that they can be trusted to put in place suitable alternatives, to genuinely consult with local communities, and now to deliver on this new commitment that they won't leave people high and dry without access to face-to-face -face, face -face banking. And Business Secretary Vince Cable says he wants assurances the new guidelines meet the demands not just of the banking industry, but also consumers and small businesses. Martha Fairley, ITV News, Brightlingsea. In the rugby today, England kept up their winning start to the Six Nations Championship. Despite a spirited performance from Italy, England ran out winners by 47 points to 17. Danny Cipriani was amongst the try scorers. And in football, Liverpool are into the quarterfinals of the FA Cup. They came from behind to beat Crystal Palace 2-1. West Brom, Reading and Blackburn also went through today. And that's all from the late team. The weather forecast is coming next. But from me and the whole team here, good night. Another beautiful day. Crizal UV protective lenses sponsors the ITV National Weather for all the people that are out in it. Where did I put it? A very good evening to you. Well, we've had varied weather this Valentine's Day with cloudy conditions in the east and clearer skies to the west. A similar situation tonight where it stays clear enough for long enough, temperatures dipping away, a patchy frost here come the small hours, quite chilly first thing. And for all of us, mostly dry initially, but we'll see grey, gloomy skies across these eastern areas. For the rest of us, a little more cheerful, patches of blue sky, spells of sunshine now and again as the cloud comes and goes, and then things deteriorate across the northwest later here, thickening low clouds. The rain seeping its way into Western Scotland and Northern Ireland and the winds whipping up as well, taking the edge for the temperatures. As for the rest of us, a little calmer and temperatures doing a little better, so not quite as cold as it has been. I'll see you again soon. Crizal UV Protective Lenses sponsors the ITV National Weather.